Chapter 5. Transforming to Glory. While transforming involves changing the appearance and character, both include decreasing in vain areas and increasing in righteous areas, all to form logical understanding. Changing the appearance means dressing up often and decreasing or increasing various substance intake. The substance changes the reality of adverse hardship conditions, which can improve your speech, voice, and writing abilities. And changing the character means beliefs, educational level, traditions, and values, and decreasing vainness, and increasing fruitful areas. The fruitfulness changes the energy of excessiveness to moderation, which can improve your freedom, codependency, independence, influence, opportunities, etc. Avoid high negative energy influences by separating yourself from people who don't rely on fruitful independence. Excessive dependence is solely for self-centered people, which means you are codependent upon controlling influences but rather others take care of you. Moderate independence is solely for loving and kind people, which means you are codependent upon guidance influences but rather take care of yourself. And actually, it takes some time for all the changes to come into manifestation. Doing things excessively equals 100%, moderation equals 63.3% and anything less than that means you aren't applying yourself much at all. But, if you haven't transformed for the higher righteousness in quite some time, your transformation structure is zero. Transformation requires correcting everything that stands in the way of the righteous victory, behavior, health, and the thought process continually. And it doesn't take much money to correct most things that stand in the way of the righteous victory. If you have demon issues, you most definitely need to retrain your thoughts. Most times it is wise to stand firm on God's word when fear gets the best of you, and if necessary, tell yourself I will keep going and I won't give up. Daily if needed. During transformation within the body, mind, and soul witness to others about the glory you share with the Father in heaven. When people don't acknowledge to transform, they wallow in trial test stories. Of which is a victory for the devil, and it shows through anger, bitterness, and the way you live. The trial test is warfare within oneself after acknowledging it is a trial test, just simply let go of the wrong emotions. Holding on to suppressed emotions can result in the eternal incarceration of the body, mind, and soul. Who wants to live in poverty for the rest of their earthly life, or feel worthless? Once you believe in Jesus Christ for salvation through the living sacrifices he made, you become worthy of not wallowing in worthlessness any longer. More steps to transform. 1. Acknowledge a need for a believer of Christ's constructive criticism. Otherwise, you will acquire validation at a non-believer's expense, and this could nullify the righteous victory. It is wise to find believers of Christ in a church. Get plugged into a local church and attend often, to allow other believers to help transform the heart with biblical knowledge. Most churches at first will allow visitors to come as they are, but eventually, they too will want to see a transformation, and this does include the appearance and character over time. 2. When do you transform into righteousness? Accept the Spirit of Jesus Christ into your heart, to be delivered from trials, to understand him as father and savior. And long suffering is a part of the test, trial, and tribulations that God puts in anyone's path. If you want long term deliverance, seek it continually. 3. How do you transform into righteousness? After acknowledging the defilement of your body playing down life for death, though it is a part of the sinful nature, continually ask forgiveness daily and believe in the power of the resurrection, to be transformed from the immoral behavior. During transformation, Sanctification takes place where you purify your heart, mind, and soul to become Christ-like. Although he was perfect, we will never be perfect because of our sinful nature. 4. Transform for self, acknowledge all failures as setbacks can be overcome. It will give you strength throughout trial tests, however, you must continually determine your value slash worth to continue to transform. And acknowledge God's signs and wonders, revealing how and when you can get things done without believing he will supply all needs without an effort. God will supply all your needs however, he too wants to see you transform, to be able to do this work yourself. 5. Be willing to tell him your dreams and goals privately. This is so they won't be burnt up in the fire. 6. Face fears including working issues out with family and friends peacefully. 7. Pick yourself up during slip UPS in your faith with God and transforming for the higher righteousness. And always remember, to do all the above requires standing for faith in God, and overcoming the enemy's power of influence. 8. Forgive enemies 70 times 70, this is to get in a habit of forgiving people for their imperfections in life. No one was created perfect, and everyone has something they don't like about themselves, but most will deny this fact. Do everything for the glory of God. Don't allow things from the past or events that happen growing up to slow you down. 9. Embody a loving and kind spirit not for deceit, but the higher righteousness. Acknowledge doing something for someone else in their time of need. 10. Don't take people for granted, acknowledge being grateful for all things great and small and thank God by giving him the glory of all things. The sooner you are ready to transform, the sooner others will acknowledge your transformation, 
and may be willing to help in some small way. And ordinarily, you can't expect people to offer big ticket items or go out the way. 11. Obtain everything righteously rather than, by deceit or theft. All the above helps to remain focused on an obvious outcome. If the outcome isn't obvious backtrack steps, to ensure overcoming trial tests rather than, wallowing in fear with self-doubt. Most importantly, make the best of everything to reach the bigger things in life, and enjoy life to its fullest. Once you overcome warfare with yourself, you can let others see your glory. While you are overcoming warfare, you can warfare for God. The warfare with an enemy will perish for the victory with God. And sure, this doesn't mean you won't ever feel a sense of worthlessness or become unforgiving toward God for trial test stories, but you can let go of the wrong emotions that hold you back a lot faster. You are worthy of honor and riches, you are worthy of seeing his glory rather than wallowing a trial test story. When I got saved my fear was transforming soon enough to keep up with others delivering Christ's message, it was the preacher and a Sunday school teacher. It is difficult to transform without hope in your life. But if you don't give negative energy your zest for life, hope will last. If the vision of Jesus gets distorted, think of the many individuals he resurrected, healed, and transformed through his message. The walk with Jesus is a free offering to show love and respect. All to be able to live and overcome the trial tests. What are God's signs and wonders? There will be earthquakes, floods, lightning and thunder, famine and pestilences, and only fear the sights and signs from heaven. Usually lightning and thunder come from the southwest, earthquakes are the results of the earth's movement, and flooding comes from rain or thunderstorms. Building self-esteem. Self-esteem is the GPS negative or positive beliefs and evaluations of oneself. Self-esteem also is known as self-concept that reflects your overall emotional state. To have self-esteem, you are confident in one's abilities and worth. You embody favorable and honorable traits about yourself. And your body is to be regarded as a value for forming self-respect. Mental or physical self-defense techniques are the strategies used to defend or market oneself self up against others whether physically or verbally. Some people often say, I want to or I am going to change the world. But, most of them are stuck using their old defense techniques and aren't unwilling to develop new ones. Using old defenses and marketing strategies doesn't advance the world, because it doesn't promote change. When people change their evil ways, they wouldn't want to be approached with the old feelings, ideas, senses, or thoughts. They will expect you to acknowledge the advancements and upgrades that they have made in their lives. And will expect you to approach them with new feelings, ideas, senses, and thoughts. Otherwise, they will know you haven't advanced or upgrade, and you don't express self-esteem. Old self-defense techniques are often intertwined with unrighteousness, and only righteousness can build up others or self. You cannot advance the world if you don't have self-esteem. You can advance the world, by building self-esteem and promoting change, while the world changes. God doesn't want anyone to suffer, and so don't put yourself above others while wallowing in selfless pride. He acknowledges suffering as a part of the human conscious and unconscious states of being. Paul said, let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem other better than themselves. Philippians 2 3, you have to respect others to gain respect, you don't have to believe everything they say. Just give them space and time to say what they have to say, before condemning their old actions and behavior. And generally, research related topics to have the facts in order before condemning. You can build trust with others, as long as you are a person of modified topics of interest, anything of greater interest than the norm. People don't mind hearing normal conversations, but confrontational conversations hinder growth, and so you must keep your topics fresh and keep an open mind. You have to take up a new conversation, to form a closer walk with Jesus or anyone. Common or popular beliefs, both are an argumentum ad populum that have logical fallacy. Popular belief states if many or most people accept a belief as true, it is evidence of the claim. However, to accept another person's or many people's beliefs without evidence as to why they accept the belief shows an inactive and risky way to accept information. For example, do human beings exist in the world by divine creation or natural processes of evolution? According to a survey, over 60% of Americans believe creation is true, and evolution is false. Nowadays people are through evolution, not by creation. One doesn't explain all details, and both creation and evolution each hold supporting facts. Something common is owned or shared by two or more people. A common belief is applied to an opinion that is held by the majority of the people in a community. Examples life is good, I'm confident, people always like me, I can do anything I want to do, I'm good at a lot of things, others will help me, and good things happen when you make them happen. The belief is often true but there are instances when it is not true. Common beliefs can only be an accepted belief of the time in which it is believed. While popular beliefs can be historic, and during the time in which it is believed. People of America often put what is common or popular before self-concerns. And this means doing things that will decrease your self-esteem. 
Does this mean most people advocate for less dignity or human rights? Yes. Doing things that lower self-confidence means remaining in a temporary comfort zone, and potentially compromising everything. Overly unsubmissive syndrome. Overly means to excessively do something, and unsubmissive means unresisting, unwilling to yield, or waver. It is an aggressive type of syndrome, two examples are the angel of death slash archangel and the unrighteous sinner. The archangel kills sinners or the innocent, and it lingers in our daily lives without respect to God. Nowadays it doesn't have God's favor since courts reprove iniquities, too it was never changed in the New Testament to reflect this political affair, with the court system. The angel of death slash archangel is a rebellious person who is highly influenced by immorality and is willing to put others and themselves in harm's way for little or no significant value. They may become a serial killer, and even may go on a killing spree. An unrighteous sinner is a rebellious person who is highly influenced by immorality, who also be willing to put themselves in harm's way for little or no significant value. They may become a thief or klepto, and may even go on a crime spree. Both are often self-doubters, and be wanting loyalty but be unwilling to give it. These are characters that you often hear about in the media, negative, crime sprees and wrongful killings by cowardice people or police, people who have given up and waiting on death to occur, or waiting to lure others to death. Both characters the archangel of death and the unrighteous sinner be unwilling to yield or waver. Neither is righteous and are evildoers, they are not dying to live. However, religious believe the Bible uses fruit trees as an example to reveal how human life becomes corrupt. In the illusion or reflection, the fruit trees are corrupt and cast into a fire. When their fleshly souls need to be reproved and renewed for the higher righteousness. Yet, in the end, no one benefits from the overly unsubmissive syndrome. Turn down the genius pedophile mentality. Without goals for a long-term relationship, a man may have concerns that his gal may be using his kids for sex to wallow in vain glory. Once a woman isn't working on a long-term commitment with a man that already has kids, the mind tends to wonder where other personifications are used aggressively to dominate. And this may or may not include molesting his kids on a normal basis. As a result, she may hold on to the perfection of the molester mentality, stray away and then forget about marriage altogether. Because it is a hidden agenda that doesn't get noticed right away. This too can leave less space to affirm long-term commitments that eventually would involve the eternal mate. Initially, marriage helped reprove the woman's direction and goals of eternal life on earth. But most playgirls rarely choose marriage as an option, they tend to choose various personifications that won't enable eternal life on earth. These are personifications that often annoy and interfere with others' dreams and goals immensely. And generally, this includes sexual advancements and assaults which leads to the molester mentality. None of the personifications will enable becoming a genius, but a genius perfects their appearance and character regularly. For these and other reasons, playgirls have to work a little harder to prove to themselves and their eternal mate that marriage is a core value for them. And actually, turn down the genius pedophile mentality, which does include commitments to sexual advancements and assaults. Playgirls ought to know their direction and goals in life, so they don't hinder the goals and success of others. Avoid promiscuous behavior. To be promiscuous means having sexual relations with several partners on a casual basis. It is to participate in casual elements of life without order or structure. Although promiscuous behavior isn't a crime itself, it does lead to accidental, irregular, and regular acts of violence in a child's life. Ignoring the innocent and pure nature of God's message will put your children in harm's way. Children are to be protected from all evil acts of violence, so if you are a parent don't stand in the progress in people's lives who do want to overcome past hurt and trauma. Acknowledge changing your evil ways. Overcoming repressed memories to transform. A person's neural systems within the brain control repression and experts consider repression an important defense mechanism. Repression is used by the brain as a psychological defense mechanism to protect itself from certain feelings such as anger, anxiety, or guilt, negative emotions. These feelings occur when we feel threatened because parts of the brain become too demanding of other parts of the brain. In psychiatry, Repression is an unconscious defense mechanism in which unacceptable fears, ideas, and impulses are suppressed out or kept out of consciousness. A person uses repression to obtain relief from mental conflict of unpleasant fantasies or traumatic past events, and so they try to forget the unwanted thoughts to avoid the situations. Often repression is done without recognizing the event ever took place. Neurotic behavior occurs when repression develops under an individual's ego. A therapist can try to extract the individual's repressed memories, but modifying the thought process is of greater interest. Having said that, the goal is to become emotionally intelligent using anxiety and fear in a modified responsible way rather than, in an unmodified irresponsible way. And generally negative and positive emotions will always play a factor. Engaging in your feelings with the love and respect forms positive emotions. To repress anger is to deny or ignore feelings, and modifying your inner strength helps build acceptance of oneself to acknowledge and face fears. All emotions are supposed to be felt at some point in life, some emotions aren't to be felt until adult ages. 
but some people suppress the youth's sexual emotions when taking advantage of them before they realize these emotions exist. This is why it's a good idea to talk with your kids about sex from ages 5 to 18, but not to the point of advancing their innocence. This is so they are aware of how their innocence can be robbed before reaching maturity. These are the main reasons most people hold in suppressed emotions and why so many suffer from anxiety and fear. It is okay to tell them people take advantage of little children to take away their innocence to wallow in vain glory. And it is okay to tell them God is not a fan of people taking advantage of innocent children and there will be a penalty for it. Optimistically adults can overcome anxiety and fear appropriately to experience a better quality of life. Repenting brings peace. When taking up Jesus' yoke, you pull his load with him because the transformation from a childlike nature into an adult can lead to a life of blessings, hope, and prosperity. Essentially, you can take a step back from the thoughtless actions of the world. Because it won't allow you to feel remorse for the wrongful actions that you bestow upon yourself and others. You must find it in your heart to avoid defiling yours and others' purest intent. The change in the heart is about God, your actions, and your behavior. Many people remain in the childlike nature during adult ages, but with God's word, the transformation is possible. In Matthew 4:17, while preaching Jesus said, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. This was after the devil tempted him and obviously, before his near-death experience and resurrection. But typically, when he was talking about the kingdom of heaven being at hand, this would translate in our day and time as Repent and reconsider your thoughts while sinning. Awaken the soul, the kingdom of heaven on earth, and its natural resources are in danger. And so, appreciate it while it is available to you. In this essence, he wasn't referring to afterlife heaven, but the here and now. Natural angelic souls while a body becomes aged by naughty girl roles and habitual habits, the consuming fire of hell burns out an earthly person's soul. Through high amounts of natural foods or vitamins, the natural angelic soul of a person shall reign supreme. The mind once again believes in the heavenly spirit of the Father, and it becomes smarter to move on to bigger and better things. The person becomes naturally able to give God glory because every day is a victory with huge blessings. The person also naturally wants to preserve her through more triumphs than ever before, if the person hasn't fulfilled their destiny, the plan they envision through the Father becomes far greater. Ambitious people tend to envision more than one destiny, so, don't give up during the Middle Ages.